Cambridge. So I'd like to welcome uh, Abdurrahman Ahmed Faisal and another Faisal, Hanin, Jana, Maya, Raz, Renad, and another Renad Mohammed, mm, Yasmin, Yahua, and Shema. Welcome everybody to this live you know, session. And this is just some kind of presentation about IGCSE, Cambridge. So are you already, can you hear me well? Please, you can write in the chat or you can use your mic and then turn it off. Can you hear me well? Yes, this is my responded. Yes, okay, great. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure if you are students or parents, but whether you are a parent or a student, you're more than welcome. And you feel free to raise your questions at the end of this you know, presentation or orientation. Uh, first of all, my name is Gamal Hassan. I'm Egyptian, as you can say, uh, but I teach English at King Aziz University in Jeddah. I have my long years of experience in teaching IGCSE, SAT, and IELTS as well. All right, so concerning the IGCSE, let's have a look at an overview here of IGCSE. Let me share the screen with you. Are you sharing the screen with me now? Yes, please. Somebody is responding. Yes, honey said yes. Okay, great. Hey, I, one of you can use the mic to respond to me, the case, and the rest can keep it up. Yes. Okay, who is this? Renat. Renat, okay, Renat. You're more welcome. And on behalf of all the audience, you can just talk to me if I raise any question and you can respond on behalf of them. So would you like me to carry on in English or in Arabic? Because I'm afraid there might be some parents whose you know, major is not English, so it would be difficult for them to follow me. What do you think? Shall I carry on in English or in Arabic? English. English, please, okay. sir. Okay, thanks a lot. So this means that most of you are students, so you can easily follow me and understand what I'm saying and doing. Great. This is an overview of IGCSE. First of all, IGCSE, what does it stand for? As you can see here, it stands for International Journal Certificate of Secondary Education. And it's very important to pronounce the words the same way because this is very important for your speaking or oral assessment. As an ID student, you're going to have the oral assessment. And ESL or ETL as well means that English as a second language. So this orientation is basically for IGCSE, ESL, English as a second language. And it focuses mainly on the extended paper because there are two kinds of papers, the extended or tiers, the extended and the core. I'm mentioned here with the extended paper. The extended paper, among two more components because we have paper two, paper four, and paper five. So these three represent the three components of your exam. At the end of the year, whether in May, June session or October, November session, you're going to sit these three papers, reading and writing, this is paper two, listening paper four, and oral assessment of speaking paper five. Okay. Any questions? Are there any questions? Uh, Mister, but before the, uh, they told us in like in the school that the extended is only for paper two and paper four. Uh, are you talking about Egypt or somewhere else? No, in the UAE. Okay, maybe this is a different case. General speaking, when you speak of RGCC, there are three components paper two, paper four, and paper five. They might mean what I'm going to say right now, just wait. 
is that if paper five is not there, it's not considered, which is, you know, and speaking doesn't count, you know, in. Because as you can see here from the slide, we have three codes now, 0510, 0511, and 0991. There used to be 0510 and 0511. They are typically the same papers, the same questions, the same content. The only difference is that in 0511, speaking counting. So you have paper two out of 80 marks, and it will represent in 0510, 70% and paper four, and this is out of 40 marks, and this would represent 30%. This is if you are sitting 0510, if your code exam is 0510. And 21, 22, and 23, this refers to the three different variants of the exam paper. But if you sit 0511, it's the same question, the same components, three components, okay? The same uh, content. But here, oral assessment is part of your total grade. And in this case, paper two in 0511 would represent only 60% of your total mark. Paper four would be 20%, and the left 20% would be for oral assessment. You got my idea? Is it clear? Yes, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Yes, anybody else? Any questions? Okay. Who is Ahmed? Ahmed is Sayed. Yes, Ahmed? If we look at paper two here, Okay, so as you can see here, paper two, reading and writing, representing either 6% of your total market in 0511 or 70% in 0510, will have six exercises. You have exercise one, reading comprehension, okay? And this is out of 13. You are given a text here, followed by some questions, WH questions, why, and then, it, Exercise two is another text, okay? Where you have four different texts followed by 10 statements, and you have to match these 10 statements, you know, to the four texts by labeling them A, B, C, D. These are the four different texts given to you. Then exercise three will be a note taking or note making exercise where read a text, followed by some headings. They range between two to four headings, and you need to provide some notes, okay? And remember that your notes should be quite short. Exercise four is a summary making exercise, and this also a, contains a long text, followed by a prompt question to summarize a certain aspect of the text, or maximum two how something is happening and why, or why there's a problem and what's the solution, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, note-taking and summary-making are quite similar, but in note-taking, you just define the notes. In summary-making, you develop the notes into paragraph of your own words. So you have to suppress the same ideas and you have to use your linkers, most appropriate linking words or conjunctions, starting with the topic sentence, et cetera, et cetera. Then exercise five and six, these are the two writing tasks here. Writing one, where you may write a letter or an email to someone you know. So in this case, most probably you're going to use informal style. And exercise six, the formal task here, where you are supposed to write a review or a report or an article. As you can see on the right here, you have the marks given to each question. Exercise one is out of 13, okay? And exercise two is out of 10. Exercise three is out of nine. Exercise four, 16, five and six, 16 each as well. 
the total here would be 80 marks, okay? This is the total mark for a paper two. If we move on to paper four here, you have short recordings where you have to uh, answer A and B based on the short recordings. And in listening, okay, you have a very good chance to listen to each text twice. So if you can get the answer from the first recording, that's fine. If not, don't panic, just relax and listen for the second time, okay? Question five is a form of filling. You might know from you know previous uh, IGCC exams that there was in reading paper or in the reading paper a form of filling exercise. You read a text and you complete the form. There is some you know missing information. Here again, it's not reading but listening. So you're given a form and you will listen to a long you know maybe TV interview, radio interview, or a lecture, and then you have to fill in one or two words. In exercise three. This is a matching exercise. You will listen to six people, and these six people will express their views and opinions about a specific topic. And then this is followed by six statements expressing their views. You have to, to match each statement with one of the recordings. Usually you are given one extra more. Also six speakers, but seven statements. If you carry on with the exam, okay, you have exercise seven, and this is multiple choice question. As you can see, exercise one or questions one through four, very simple, very easy. You should not miss any points there, but difficulty is graded, is going up, okay? In this case, yes, who's Mohammed said and what does he want? Really, very weird, you know. Mr. Gamal is requesting remote control of your screen. I'm not requesting anything. So. Anyway, Mr. Gamal is requesting, so Mr. Gamal is requesting, let me, okay, approve. A Now we carry on with the listening. Thank you. Now, uh, for the listening, as I said, the first four recordings for eight questions, okay, A and B. So they are. In principle, four questions, each question has A and B. You listen to each recording twice and write brief direct answers. Question five is a form filling where you listen to long talk or conversation or interview, and then you have to fill in one or two words max. And remember to read carefully the instructions at the beginning of each question to know exactly the word limit you're allowed to use. They say one or two words or a number, you have to abide by this, you have to go by the word uh, limit, okay? Exercise or question six is the matching where you listen to six people expressing their views and then you have seven statements. So you have to match each statement to one of the six speakers and you'll be left with one extra statement. Question seven, a more challenging question as well. It's a long interview but here in this case, you're supposed to make a choice of A, B, C as an answer to some given questions. 
The problem with this question is that you need to pay attention to everything being said because the three choices are almost said by the speakers, okay? But which one is the correct answer? This is what really matters, okay? For example, you can talk about your school memory. You said what you did in whatever time and how it went on and how you felt so that such information is mentioned. But the question will, you know, need one of these three choices to be correct. Finally, question eight containing A and B will have, you know, a form filling questions. In this case, you are done with the listening paper. Finally here, you can have the oral assessment. Okay, this is paper five. And general speaking, it goes on for about 15 minutes. Students' real talking time is between six to nine minutes. And this paper takes, you know, four stages. Stage A, the examiner, he or she will welcome you to the exam. And then you have the, this examiner, you know, giving you an idea about what the exam is like, what you're supposed to do. Then stage B, in stage B, in stage B, you, uh, the examiner will ask you some questions, you know, by raising such questions, he will try to, or she will try to know exactly what topic might fit you best. And then in stage C, he or she will hand in a card to you, a speaking card, where you have to look at the topic and the five prompts given to you. And then you talk about these prompts according a, to their order. Okay, and then the most important part is part D, where the whole thing is recorded now. So this is just a general idea. Okay, and now I can show you real past papers exams. Before we go into that, you have to know exactly what you're being tested on in reading and writing. So look at this and see. Hold on, please. Okay. Concerning reading, as you can see here, we have, these are known as assessment objectives. Assessment objectives. You have four assessment objectives here. A student taking or setting the IGCSE ESL should be able to understand and respond to information presented in a variety of forms. You'll be given some ads, some prose texts, okay? And then you have to read such texts and ads okay, and newspaper articles or else, and figure out some informations and ideas. You have to select and organize material relevant to specific purposes, and this is based on the type of questions given. It could be why something has happened, how it's happened, when it's happened, etc., etc. And then you have to find the relationship between such material to understand and distinguish between facts, ideas, and opinions. A fact is what something is, Opinion is what you think about it. For example, you have a Dell laptop. This is a fact, this is a Dell laptop. But what do you think of the, this Sachi or a, this Dell laptop is your opinion about it. It could be a good one, it could be an expensive one, it could be very practical, it could be very old. So, also, you are tested about what's being, you know, stated or what's being inferred or suggested. So there is something that given, clearly and something where you have to draw some conclusions. So these four, you know, reading assessment objectives are tested in an exam. When you go for the writing paper, for the writing side, you have also six here, assessment objectives. In writing, the examiner would like to see if you can communicate clearly, accurately and appropriately. Clearly, accurately and appropriately. So you have clear ideas that are written according to conventions of English grammar. You know English grammar well, you know how to use punctuations well, you know how to use the English tenses well, you know how to use the English st st sentence structure well, 
So from simple compound, complex, et cetera, et cetera. So your grammar is tested, but indirectly. There is not a certain, you know, question grammar, but in your writing, okay, the grade, the mark is divided between content, okay, and language. So the content will be eight and the language will be eight. The language, they will look at your sentence structure, word choice, punctuations, etc., etc. So how to communicate your ideas clearly, that's a clarity of ideas. And how to communicate your ideas accurately means correct use of English grammar and appropriately using the correct style, formal or informal or semi-formal. Okay. And how to convey information and express opinions as well, because sometimes you're asked to write an article, whether argumentative article for and against or opinion article. So you should be able to express your ideas clearly and your opinions clearly as well. And how to employ and control a variety of grammatical stuff. As I said, all what's coming is just explanations of the first one, which is very important. How to communicate clearly, accurately, and appropriately. So clearly, clarity of your ideas when somebody reads what you've written is very clear to grasp the idea, understand it. And accurately related to the correct use of English grammar and appropriately using the correct style and a correct language. Okay. And as well as we said here, observe conventions of paragraphing. You should know how to construct a good paragraph by having a topic sentence, putting the details, and finally you can uh, end with a concluding sentence. Okay. And here, employ appropriate register or style. Register refers to the, your choice of words and style is related to the kind of language formal or informal or semi-formal. So an ID student should be aware of such, you know, objectives. Answers to any questions. You should know exactly how such a stuff is graded. Okay, check. So this is a general overview of the GCSE. Now we can move into real papers, okay, and show you what the exam is like. But before I carry on, I would like to uh, listen to your questions or, you know, any queries you might have. So let me look at the chat box here. I have almost 25, 26 people. Let me, if you have any question, you can write them right now, one by one. Yes. Any questions? Hello? If you've got any questions? No, sir, everything is clear. Okay, good. Somebody else? No, sir. No, no, sir. Great. Okay, great. Somebody wrote in the chat box. Let me check what's there. Can you please give us more details for the speaking paper? Yeah, okay. As I said, the speaking paper, okay, is four stages. You won't feel that there are four different stages, but it goes like this. First of all, the examiner would come out of the room, okay, and will welcome you to the exam because you are supposed to come in and wait in a waiting hall. Then when it is your turn, the examiner, he or she, because, you know, we have in some places, you know, ladies and other gentlemen, so he or she will come and welcome you to the room. Stage A would be very simple stage where the examiner would welcome you to the exam and give you an idea about the exam, what it is like, what you're supposed to do. This is stage A. Stage B, he will break the ice and get you into the mood by raising some, you know, impersonal questions, okay, about your favorite stuff, you know, a, about you, maybe your school, the country where you live, etc., etc. Such stage is there to break the ice and at the same time to give the examiner an idea about the most appropriate topic for you. Because usually the exam comes each session with about 15 topics, okay? So which one would best, you know, uh, 
would be best for you, this depends on your responses to the questions. So if he asks you some questions about what do you prefer to do in your spare time, and you say, I, I'm going for, I, I'm interested in reading, for example. So in this case, he would choose a topic or she would choose a topic related to reading. Or I'm interested in movies. So we'll talk about cinemas or other, you know, media stuff or sports. So this is always the case. Or I'm interested in reading history. So he or she might raise, you know, or give you a topic about history and culture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then after that, he will hand in a card to you. A card usually has a topic with a statement underneath and five bullet points as prompts that you have to talk about, okay, a, in the same order given to you. You will keep this for about two minutes or three minutes max. So you need to focus on, to on the topic and what ideas to discuss. And then you will start talking. And this will be the most important part of the a, exam where uh, whatever you say will be recorded. Is it okay, Hanin? Because Hanin read such a question. All right, any more questions? No, sir, thank you. Okay, great. No, sir, th thank you. Here, I'll, I'll show you now, I'll share with you the, the past papers from reading to listening and to speaking. And give you some exam tips and strategies that might be helpful to you if you're setting your exams very soon, especially in November. Okay, let me share here with you. Share. And let's go with this. What are you sharing now? Cambridge, a uh, paper to reading and writing extended paper. Excellent, excellent. Who is this? Ziad. Ziad. Hi, Ziad. Thanks a lot. Exactly. This is a past paper, as you know. This is the title given to such papers. And this is Cambridge Assessment International Education, Cambridge International General Certificate of Secondary Education. This is paper two, and the code is 0510. So that means this paper is 70% of the students' grade. And paper four would be 30%. This paper, as I said in the overview of the exam paper, has you know, a text like, oh, this is a front page. First of all, where you have some instructions, what to use and what kind of pen and so on, and the fact that you're not allowed to use dictionaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then this would be, you know, the text here. This text, in fact, okay, will be followed by some WH questions here. In the exam, you're supposed to have this text on the left and the questions on the right. So you don't have to flip the pages every now and then. This is very practical. So even though you may have a past papers copied, you know, you buy at the booklet, make sure that they are organized and arranged in a way that the text is on the left and the questions are on the right. This is the ideal way to do it. So if we go, for example, let me try if we can do that. Uh, here you can have, let me try to display here and see if we can have it as two papers. Yes. Right, so it works now. Can you see it now? So this is exactly the way your exam paper, you know, is set. You have the text here and you have the questions here. So for such exercise, all you have to do, the most important thing is to read each question and highlight the keywords. For example, how did Jennifer find first out about the job? So the keywords here could be how, for example, and find out and job. Then I have to skim read the text or scan read the text to find such a relevant information. And once I find it, I just write it here in brief. In this particular case, if we, let me go, you know, 
zoom in here so you can see it well. Could you find the answer here? I want you to start reading it as quickly as possible and find the answer to the question, how did Jennifer first found a, find about the job? I want you just to read Sir, can I answer? Yes, please. Uh, a colleague of her has told her about the job. Yes, so all you have to do is a colleague told her here. Maybe you have done it before, right? Yes, yes. Yes, that's why you came quickly with the answer. That's good. This is practice because really the exam tips and the strategies, you know, can be done in two or three lessons. But what matters is that you keep practicing to get the full mark or to be familiar with any exam tricks and tips. Okay. And you carry on like this. But I would say as well here, when you start question one, I will give you another tip here is that don't start with question one, you start with question nine. So you go, you go along down here and see here, what does Jennifer like about living and working in Antarctica? Give four details. So this question requires four details here, okay? And unfortunately, such details are not spotted in one paragraph or one place of the text. They are scattered, they are spread around the text. That means if you have an idea, about these four details and keep them in mind all the time so you can find them while reading through the text. But if you keep this question to the very end, you will have to read the text again. So make sure that you read this question at the very beginning, keep it in mind. So in all cases, you can work on two or more questions at a time. This question is always there in mind. What does she like about living and working there? living and working and like so anything of such you know language so something she might enjoy something she might be interested in okay something she's happy with so anything with similar meaning would be part of such details so remember to read the last question together with the question one or before it okay and then you can skim scan the text to find the relevant information am i clear Yes. Excuse me, sir. These are the most. Yes. So, uh, so you just said that there are more than uh, four, po four points that we need to write in question number nine all over the text. But, sir, a teacher of, yes. uh, in our school told us that it will be only found in one paragraph. Each no, question I don't in a paragraph. No, if you can examine here this text in particular, okay, this is just a reality. The, they might, I don't think this is quite true, but here, if you go back to the text here, okay, you can read here. What do we look for? We look for four details about what she likes, about working or living there. If you read, read the first paragraph here, you can find one. I think the gentleman, okay, who gave me the answer could figure it out, right? Yes, what uh, is it? What uh, is it? Uh, Huh? So just Mont? such a fantastic environment or uh... yes a fascinating it's a fascinating environment this is one or you can say the amazing colors range or the colors of the landscape any of these is one so fascinating environment colors of the landscape or the an amazing color or range of colors amazing range of colors this is these three ideas are one so don't write them as three, but they are one. If you carry on and carry on, you'll find more and more here in other paragraphs. So this, my son, proves to you that they are not in one paragraph. You get what I mean? Yeah, thank you. Any more questions relative to exercise one? So the main exam tip for IGCC students is to read the questions carefully, highlight the keywords, and look for synonyms that say paraphrase the question, what she likes, what she enjoys, what she's interested in, what she's happy with, what pleases her, okay, what she admires. Can you see all of these have one thing in common? It expresses something positive about something you'd like to do. You get the idea? Yeah, yeah. If you're talking about difficulties, you can look for problems, negative stuff, okay, hard tasks, etc., etc. So again, remind you, just a reminder, 
read the question, highlight the keywords, and remember to begin with question number nine, the last one, to be able to keep this in mind and look for the details. Because if you don't start with this one, we would never, you know, get the fact that we can spot such information here, right? Because we haven't got any idea about any stuff. Am I clear? And the yeah. IGCC it depends on now on paraphrase like IELTS. IELTS reading, okay, and listening has a lot of paraphrase, even writing. When you read the prompt for the writing task, you need to paraphrase it to use your own words to press the same idea. Okay, some people are writing on the chat here. Uh, good evening, sir. Can you inform us about how to study and cover full English syllabus? Yes, this is another question here. In fact, if you have attended this part about the reading and writing, you know, assessment objectives, you as a non-native speaker of English, that's why English is a second language or maybe a foreign language, but here is a second language. You should be able, as we said, to understand written text and listening text, and you should be able to speak as well, okay, clearly, accurately, and efficiently. There are different bo books, you know, to help you. There is English as a second language, and there are many other writing books, you know, like Successful Writing or Focus on Writing. English as a second language, Focus on Writing. Many, many books, okay, or, or International English. You can get the material from different sources. What matters is that at that level, you should be able to read some given texts and respond to some questions. You should be able to make notes, to write summaries, and write articles, as well as you know reviews uh, and uh, reports. I hope I have answered your question maybe in brief, but you know it's quite easy to say things, but it takes a long, long time and practice to reach your target or achieve that. Okay, any more questions? Okay, if we move on to the next exercise here, this would be exercise two. Exercise two, as you can see here, is the four texts given here, A, B, labeled A, B, C, D, and followed by 10 statements here. Again, paraphrase and understanding these statements very well is the key to spotting, you know, the correct text. It says here, describe a service which allows learners to speak directly with teachers. So these four texts here, in these four tables, about some, you know, reviews about some websites, teaching people how to play the guitar. So which one, which one, which one of these four, you know, a allows learners to speak directly with their teachers. You have to read and find. How to go about this question? First of all, read the statements. Paraphrase them and summarize them. Paraphrase and summarize because you have to write very shortly what they mean. For example, which service, let's say which text here has such a service that allows learners, learners will be the students, the people who are interested in playing the guitar, to speak directly, to talk or chat with their instructors or teachers or trainer, okay? So in this case, you need to know that something that to talk directly to the teacher or to talk immediately or to chat right away. When you go over the text here, you'll find this maybe in C or something where they can chat, you know, with their uh, teachers. It allows them to chat directly with the teachers. So once you read any of these statements, you need to paraphrase it, but very shortly, in short I mean, briefly, and then go over the text here to find such relevant information. Once you find any reference to such idea, you know that this is the text. And all you have to do is just to label it here, right? A or B or C, depends which text you find such information. Any questions about exercise two? Any questions about exercise two? No, sir, okay. No. For exercise three, it's a very simple exercise. 
and you should not miss any points here. It's very simple. You're given a text, as you can see here, okay? Maybe a scientific text, a literary text, any text, and it's followed by a table with three, two to four headings. And you're supposed to fill in nine notes here. So if there are three, that means you can fill out three under each one. If there are two, maybe five and four. If there are four, two each, and then one could be three. The idea is that this exercise is very simple because you can easily understand the heading and you can skim scan the text and find the relevant information and write briefly here some notes. Some notes you can say to and start or just the verb or ing. So to play tennis or play tennis or a playing tennis. So these are three different ways you can uh, write the note. Just to begin with the infinitive, play tennis. The infinitive is to, to play tennis or using the ing form, playing tennis, or it could be just a, a phrase, okay? A bad weather, extreme weather, okay? High temperature, etc., etc. It's a very simple one. And for students who target the star or the A, they should not miss any points in exercise one, two, and three. One, two, three, you should get the full mark. 13, okay, nine, uh, 10, and then nine. Then with the summary, if you can miss only one point, okay, maybe for language or so, but you should be able to find eight details. This is the next one, exercise a, yes, this is the summary of exercise four. You're supposed to read a text and write a summary about how to improve your intelligence and how to be more intelligent to other people. So there are two aspects of the question here. How to improve your intelligence, this one, and how to appear more intelligent to other people. For exercise, you know, a three and four, usually there are more points than required in the exam. For example, if we go back to here, this exercise, you are required to write nine notes. You may, you may find 10, 11, 12. Let me go back to the chat. Somebody's raising a question. Yes, any questions? No, this is somebody just playing around. We don't care about these people. Okay, so this is the case here. Even for the summary, you're supposed to write a eight points. You may have 10, 12, 11. So usually there are more points than required. So for summaries and note taking, it's very important to notice. You read the question, highlight the keywords, how to improve your intelligence. In order to write a good summary, you need to write a good topic sentence. And such a good topic sentence should be direct answer to the question. For example, here, how to, to improve your intelligence. So how to be smarter and how to look smarter to others or in the eyes of others. So in this case, you can easily do it. Okay. You get it? So there are some people who are just playing around and this is, you know, unethical. These people have no brains just to play around in such a you know, live session. What do they want? I just wonder, and I ask them, what do you want? Do you want to play around? We're not here to play around. If you want to play around, find somewhere else to play around. But we are here to help students and help parents. You should be honest and have some kind of morals. You understand? This is really stupid on behalf of some people. We are supposed to be in a, in a society where people should do better for themselves and others, not to hurt others or damage them or distort them. You know, everybody will be questioned for his deeds. Remember, there is a day when everybody will stand in front of God to be asked for his deeds. Why did he do so? Why? And you'll be rewarded. For good, good. For bad, you know what it is like. So I'm sorry to say that. Are you following, ladies and gentlemen? I'm sorry. 
but I can see that there are some people who would like to mess up the presentation or orientation. I wonder why. Anyway, a, for the summary, again, you need to find eight points. You have to start with a topic sentence that sums up the answer. So for me, you can say to improve your intelligence and to appear more intelligent, you can do blah, 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 first of all, and so on. Or here are some tips to be smarter and to look smarter to others. So it depends on the way you can paraphrase the, the prompt here and answer it. And you need to provide some linkers in addition besides moreover to add some ideas. And for contrast or contradiction or concession, you can say, however, on the other hand, nonetheless, and they add the other ideas. Then it comes to writing. And for right here, we're given two tasks. One task where you are supposed to write an email or a letter. And most probably, this task will test your ability to write informally. So using informal register or style. And you need to read the prompt carefully. And you need to discuss these three bullet points in your you know, task. And here it is an email. An email is a letter. No difference. An email is a letter. No difference because, you know, in the past people used to write letters, but now with technology, it's in a few emails. So it's almost the same form, but it depends who you're writing to. So you have to be careful. And if you're writing to a friend or a cousin or somebody that's appeared to you, you can just use hi, okay, or just write his name right away and use informal style. Okay. So here, for example, last month, you won a competition to meet a famous person. Yesterday, you finally met them. Write an email to a friend telling them about this. So your task is to write an email to a friend telling him about such event, you know. What are you supposed to discuss? Number one, explain what you had to do to win the competition. So you won the competition. Why? What did you do to win it? You need to explain. And look at these three keywords, explain, describe, say. They are always in each task similar to this. If you go for variant two, variant three, if you go for uh, this summer 19, if you go for winter 19, the same. So explain, describe, say, but maybe their order is different. Maybe say, come first, then describe, then explain at the end, or describe, come first, and then explain, uh, explain at the end and say in the middle. But the three keywords are there, so you should not be, you should be quite able to explain things by giving details, describe things by using descriptive language that addresses the five senses of a human being. So let me see what you're talking about, its color, its, its size, okay? You can tell me about it, its price, you can say me how I, I feel it, etc. So descriptive language. For example, if I say I drive a car, just to have a concept of a car, but did it give you any description of a car? No. But I say, I drive an, a brand, a brand new, a red sports Mercedes. So here I'm giving description. And of course, big difference between the first sentence and the second one. So in the second one, you give me the brand, you give me the color, you give me the age, it's brand new, etc., etc., etc. So you should be able to provide the kind of language here, explain by giving details, describe by focusing on using adjectives and adverbs, and then say how you felt describing your feelings. You may feel quite shocked, you may feel quite happy, quite interested, you may feel sad, disappointed, dismayed, uh, delighted, so feelings. You should be able to figure out, okay, what the prompt requires you to do and do it. And you're supposed to write between 150 to 200 words. Don't keep to 150, but go for 200 and max 210. Okay. As well as for the summary, by the way, there is a word limit between 100 and 120. You can go for 100. That's quite good. 105, 10, 15, max, max 20. And I would advise you not to target 20 because if you target 20, you will go more. But target 100 to 105, 110, 115 would be quite good. Okay. 
And in task six, exercise six here, this would be a kind of maybe a review, a report, or an article. We're expressing you know, a, your opinion uh, about this one. And this task usually requires you to use a formal style and register. So in class, you have been discussing whether it is important for all students to have music lessons, you know, uh, at school. Here are some, you know, uh, comments. And then there are more important things to do at a school. So music, you know, to have music listen, to agree or disagree, do you support this and be being in favor of it or no, you're against, you reject this. Whatever your point of view, we highly appreciate it. We highly respect it. But what matters, how to express it and how to support it. So in any given task here, feel free to understand it, think about it, express your point of view, whether for or against. But what matters really, how to express this and how to give support to your point of view. You're supposed here to write, if it is an opinion article, you can write between four to five paragraphs, an introduction stating your point, the topic and your point of view, then two body paragraphs of support, one body of a opposing view and refutation, then final conclusion where you restate your opinion. Sir, do you mean argumentative writing? No, this is opinion. Argumentative, and be careful with pronunciation, dear son. It's not argumentative, no, argumentative. Argumentative pronunciation is very important because you'll be sitting your oral exam. So each student has to work on his pronunciation. It's very important, okay? So for argumentative, it could be four paragraphs, no more. One introductory paragraph where you state the topic, and then one body paragraph of support for uh, arguments for, and one body paragraph of arguments against, and then finally, you give your opinion. And this is one major difference between opinion articles and argumentative articles. In an opinion article, you should state your opinion at the very beginning. So you discuss the topic, introduce the topic, and your opinion, give it in the first paragraph. Then either to give one long body paragraph of support or two short body paragraphs of support, then one of an opposing view, okay, an idea that contradicts your point of view and refute it, deny it, reject it, don't accept it, prove that this is wrong. And then finally, you state your opinion. This is opinion. In an argumentative or for an against, you introduce the topic in the first paragraph, then one body paragraph containing all the arguments for, a second body paragraph, all the arguments against, and finally, your point of view. Am I clear? So this is just an overview of IDCC and a quick, you know, exam tips and strategies of what you can do. If you've got any questions and queries, you're more than welcome. Um, so... okay. Yes. Yes, any questions? Do you advise us to read, for example, if I have essay writing exam tomorrow, should I read essay? today or see my grammar and my writing? Okay, it's a very good question. You have uh, uh, an uh, exam tomorrow, right? You're supposed to write an essay or an article tomorrow? Is that yes. what you said? Okay, of course, preparation for such a task should have started a long time ago. And my piece of advice is to be a good writer, you have to be a good reader. You have to read different texts a wide range of different texts and get familiar with the different, you know, uh, styles and register you can use in each type of task. So once you're familiar with such types and a variety, okay, and language and the style and structures, you can easily produce your own. You know, when a baby is born, he doesn't know how to speak or she doesn't know how to speak. It's a baby yet, but a baby would spend maybe a year, a year and a half, two years, two years to be able, you know, to grasp whatever he, he or she can listen to. And then finally, he would use one word, maybe mom. Then sometime later, dad. Okay, later maybe dad. Mom, mom, Maya. 
my mind. So he starts building up his words, you know, his sentences. So it takes a lot of time to read and read well with concentration and text analysis. And then you can produce your own. You, can, you may need some, you know, teachers to give you some tips and strategies and to analyze the text with you and to give you some guidelines, how to write and what kind of style you can use, what kind of, you know, center structure you can use. So this would give you a lot of help, but it takes time, okay? Because you have, a, you have an exam tomorrow, you can just look at some models to see the way they are formatted, they are organized, and maybe you can have some ideas as well and see how they are expressed on paper. Any more questions? Um, sir, can you tell us how like the, the form, the letter form, the, yeah, the letter form, because when yes. I on Google, they had so many opinions that like you should write your address and then the person, like the person that you're sending to at the, their address, like, yeah, so. so For IGCSE daughter, I'm talking now about IGCSE ESL, all right? You're not supposed to use any address at all. You just begin with the greeting, dear, or hi, and you write his first or her first name. And then you have to show what kind of relationship you have with the person, okay, by giving just a simple introduction, and then right away discuss the topic as given in the exam. Let me share something here with you from Edexcel, okay, which could be a kind of a model to you, all right? If I go just here, um, yes, E S L here. Okay. Share. Are you sharing an email with me now? Yes. This is from Edexcel because in the exam paper of, uh, uh, sorry, of Oxford. In Oxford exams, this is the reading paper, okay? The reading comprehension comes in the form of email sometimes or other texts. So this is an example of an email. So hi, David. Hello, David. David. And of course, you need to use a comma after it, right? And look, hope you are well and that you like me are enjoying, you know, it's very, you know, simple style, as if you're talking. The writer here didn't say, I hope, right? So this is one aspect of writing emails or letters to people you know, because this is informal. You get the idea? And usually you write in paragraphs. So hope you're well and that you like me are enjoying the time off from college, they are on, during the break time now or the summer time or else, winter break or else. The school year was great, so this is the summer, but we seem to have so much extra work in English. I found geography less time consuming but also difficult. Okay, at the moment I'm working on, can you see the difference in tenses he's using? I hope you're well, present simple. But enjoy your own drawing, present pro progressive, okay? The year was great, past simple. So the fact that you use variety of tenses gives taste, okay, and a flavor to your writing and will qualify you for a higher grade, okay? The fact that he didn't say, I hope, he didn't give a full clause here, but just shorten that, okay? It's very busy, okay? So at the moment, I'm working part-time in a restaurant washing dishes. It's very busy, it's, he didn't say it is. 
And as you can see, it's very simple language. No complicated language, no very advanced you know, vocab. This is the first part of the email. Here is the second part. I'm also putting more time and so on. So at the end, speak soon, Tom. Can you see how informal it is? You get it, daughter? Yes, sir. Thank you. Most welcome. So in this case, you know, we have many international exams organized by many, you know, English organizations, whether they are British, American, or else. You have the SAT, SAT. You have the IGCSE. You have the TOEFL. There are many, many exams. You have IELTS. And each one, okay, at a time, a, they test your language and your language proficiency, but they test it in different ways. The exam questions differ from one exam to the other. So you have to know exactly the requirements of the exam you're sitting, and then you go by it. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Excuse me, sir. Yes? Sir, uh, is it uh, like at the end of the writing the letter, do we need to write our name? Before writing our name, do you write your friend, your loving friend? You can say friend? love with love, and you just put it. Love with love, and that's it. All right, thank you, sir. Come. Any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, sir, um, I have a question. Yes? In the previous exercise where we had to talk about the music <laughs> and things of the such, say yes. for instance, I am with taking music sessions, um, yes. music, sorry, music lessons. Yes. Um, before stating my opinion, if I happen to mention a negative side of the music lessons, although I do agree on having them, does that make me lose marks? Like, do I only have to be on the positive side? Look, when you write, you should know how to organize your task. First of all, you have to differentiate between two different tasks. Is it opinion or argumentative? That's say, is it for and against or just an opinion? And you have to organize it accordingly. If it is an opinion, you need to state the topic at the, first, at the very beginning and include your opinion in the first paragraph, okay? Yeah. And you are recommended to, to raise a rhetorical question, okay? Like, oh, okay, yeah. Are you interested in, have you ever been thought of, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. And then, you give your opinion, and then in the following body paragraphs, you can support your opinion with two main paragraphs as part of the body. And then you take one opposing view and refute it. For example, oh. some people might say that a music lessons will waste our time. Okay? Yeah. This is an opposing view. I say, no, nothing is further from the truth. The fact that Understanding, you know, music lessons will develop, you know, your aesthetic skills and which will develop your ability to organize things and to be more committed to a schedule. And so, so you need to refute it and deny it and say that this is wrong, but in a decent way. Yeah. However, so if, it, if you approach it as an uh, for and against, you need to say the topic at the beginning, you know, uh, in a in a modern world now, people uh, highly appreciate music. So some people are in favor, some people are against in schools. And then you give one full paragraph why some people are against, one full yes. paragraph some people are in favor, and then the the last paragraph will be your point of view, okay. supporting either side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Any more questions? Any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? How did you find this session? Did it give you an idea? Did it help you in any possible way? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. I'm more than happy to have you. And uh, it's always nice to receive your questions and try to answer them. IGCC is not 
a difficult hole. He can achieve a very high score. But remember that with the new one, 0991, is almost the same, the same paper, the same content. But the only difference is there in marking it. And let me share something here with you. So again, to give you an idea about the difference between the old you know, format and the new format in grading only. Uh, here, let me share this with you. Uh, yes, the cavalry, Oxford guide, yes. This is the main difference here when you look at Yes, here, let's share. What can you see now? The gradings. Yes. So the only difference, we used to have the bottom grade. As you can see here, from the, uh, at the very top, we have a star right and then followed by an a b c d and so on the only difference now in england in britain they decided to differentiate between some levels some levels as you can see here two categories a star and a have become three different categories right you can get a seven which is different from an eight different from a nine so these two categories only for two different levels of students, but here they have become three different levels. So a student with a, with a nine could be regarded as better than just a star because an A star could include eight and nine, right? But here nine is only for someone who is a top student. So it's an idea about the fact that these three categories have become, or these two have become three, and these two have become three as well. From C, it would be grid uh, mark four, then you have five and six, but these two used to be one, they used to be level B. You get what I mean? Your answers would be the same, the exam format and content is the same, but it's only by giving more and more accurate classifications of students' performance. So I would advise someone who is a top student to go for the numerical 0991, because he's sure, he's definite, that he will get a nine. But if you doubt it, he can go for the A to J grading system. I hope this is clear to you. All right? Yeah, it's clear. Any more questions? Any more questions? I hope that was, you know, a fruitful to you, that was helpful in any possible way. And you may, you know, a correspond or a send your queries a, to WeTeach and I might answer them anytime. Thanks a lot and enjoy your, you know, studies and your exams as well. Wishing you all the best. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you, sir.